Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. 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 I want to make sure you can hear me good. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to 6 a.m. Prayer Pursuit. This is the Excelling Church, Georgia campus, where your life gets better from here. I'm one of your lead pastors, Pastor Desmond Peacock Sr., and I'm happy that you all are online with us this morning. Just come online. Do me a favor. Continue to share this to your own Facebook platform. Continue to share. Continue to share. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Continue to share, continue to share. Amen, good morning, Angela. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Starting our week off right, y'all. Beginning our week off right. The last week in November, I pray your Thanksgiving was a blessing. And I pray that your week is even more a blessing. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right. We want to go ahead and get started. We want to go ahead and get started. If you could do me a favor, we're going to go through, we're going to go straight to our Bibles this morning. We're going to go straight to our Bibles. So if you have your Bibles, open it up with me. If not, it's okay. I'm just going to read two verses to you. And I feel this is going to start our week off amazing. Amen. So if you got your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Psalm. The book of Psalm, Psalm chapter 40, Psalm chapter 40, verses 1 and 2. Psalm chapter 40, verses 1 and 2. And I'm going to read it out of the New King James Version, but you can, re you can read it in whatever version you have this morning. Amen. So Psalm chapter 40, verse 1 and 2, and it reads, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. I'm going to read that one more time. It reads, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. Hmm. This chapter of scripture pretty much details preserving faith in times of trial, right? Preserving your faith in times of trial. But it started off with, and it's amazing because this verse started off with, I waited patiently on the Lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry. So it starts off even in the midst of your trial, even as you're having faith through your trial, we must wait patiently. We must wait patiently. And I, I, when I read it, I, I sit there and I say to myself, it starts off with, I waited patiently. Now, one of our challenges, we all know this. We all know this is a challenge for us as men and women of God to wait patiently on God to do what his word says he'll do. You know, waiting patiently. And as we wait patiently on God, what are we doing as we're waiting patiently? And the crazy thing was, it says... As, you, as I wait patiently on the Lord, he inclined to me and heard my cry. So what does that mean also? 
That means as I wait patiently, I'm also talking and crying to God. I'm also pleading with God as I wait patiently. See, sometimes we feel that if we plead to God at that very moment, he's supposed to answer. Sometimes we, we feel as though when we, when we pray to God and the prayer is significant enough that he's supposed to answer immediately. Sometimes we feel as though, you know, if I get on my knees this morning or if I get on my knees and, and I start speaking in holy tongue, he's, he's bound to answer my prayer immediately. Or if I get on this prayer call or this prayer live stream this morning, he's bound to hear my prayer and he's going he's gonna to answer it. But the key factor that we, that we miss and when we pray to God is waiting patiently on him to answer us. Wait patiently, wait patiently. And we live in a life that is hard to wait patiently because everything is so quick. Everything, everything is so quick. And with some of us, even when we, like for example, we order something online, we immediately want it, right? We, we immediately want, want it at that very moment. We, even though we know we gotta wait, patiently on it we still want it or we're always looking at our especially now in the holiday season a lot of us have already started our shopping for Christmas a lot of us have already begun some of us have probably I probably started in the beginning of November because obviously the sales are going on in the beginning of so when we put place in the order online and we're waiting on it to come in in, in the mail how many of us check our shipping updates every day? <laughs> How many of us check our shipping updates every single day just to make sure that it's, it's in route or every day we check it, we see it, it, it hasn't gotten closer to our destination or if, if it's sitting still? How many of us? Let, let, let's just be honest. Be honest. I, I know I'm one of them. If I order something, especially if I'm ordering something as a gift for my children or my wife, I am sitting there trying to make sure that I get it. It comes. So I'm on my phone every day looking at when, how, where so I can grab it, right? Yeah, that's me too. That's me too. I, I'm always doing that. And we do the same thing with God. We do the same thing with God, y'all. We sit there, we place our order. <laughs> we place our order with God. And we pay. We give our tithes. So we place our order, we pray with God. We're praying with God, that's our order, right? We tithe, that's our payment. And then we're sitting there looking at our phones, looking at our Bibles. Every Sunday we wake up trying to figure out, okay, when is it coming? Or Monday morning, is it here yet? Tuesday, is it here yet? And we have to realize that we got to wait patiently. We got to wait patiently. Have you ever noticed that there were times where you ordered things and you kind of forgot that you ordered it? And then it, it was delivered with your name on it? And you're like, where is this coming from? And you open it up. And you're like, oh shoot, I totally forgot that I had I had ordered this thing. Because sometimes you order things and it's not that important. You know it's coming, so you just wait on it. You know, I, I know I ordered this or I have a subscription, sub, a subscription to this, right? Forgive me, y'all. My, my mouth has messed me up. A subscription to this. So I know every month is coming, so I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about it coming in or when it's coming in because I know it's going to come in. So I don't really pay too much attention to this. Wow. But we, 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 we don't want to wait patiently on other things because it's extremely important to us. You know, I, I may have this subscription to Razor Blades. I know they come in every month, so I ain't got to worry about it. But I purchased this present for my wife, so it needs to come in because I need to make sure I wrap it. I hide it and it's, it's ready for, for Christmas. But we're not, if we look at it, if we look at what we're doing in regards to natural materialistic things and we look at how we're channeling that with our holy living, we're channeling that, channeling that 
with our relationship with God. A lot of us, God, thank you, Jesus. A lot of us are the things that, that we subscribe to. <laughs> We're not worried about it because it's going to happen anyway. We realize it. Our waking up in the morning, our breathing, our putting on clothes, <laughs> our jumping in our vehicles, going to work, um, our having a house. We know that stuff is there. So we're not really paying too much attention to that. But we're paying attention to God, I want you to, I pray for you to help me in my finances. So I don't have to worry about money anymore. I pray for you, God, to help me get through this part of school so that way I can finally live a stress-free life. I don't have to worry about a paper or I don't have to worry about a, a dissertation or I don't have to worry about a, an exam. So God, I want you to help me in this right now. Or God, I want you to help me. This is fine. So I'm not worried too much about that, but I want you to help me in this right now, Lord. I want you to help me in this part of my life, this relationship. And when we're asking him for those certain things, we're not, we're not patient enough to wait on God to deliver. And God is just saying, be patient. Even in this, this is, this is to the chief musician, a Psalm of David. This is, this is the, they're saying, wait patiently on the Lord. He doesn't just say wait, he says wait patiently. And see, a lot of us love waiting, but a lot of us don't like, don't like waiting patiently. Patiently meaning it's not going to happen when you want it. Patiently meaning, <laughs> how many of us have gone to, <laughs> wow, thank you God for bringing these examples. How many of us have gone to an appointment? Your appointment is scheduled at 930 so you get there at nine o'clock early, right? And you're waiting patiently. You know your appointment's at 9.30. So you begin to wait. There it is, you begin to wait. 9.15 rolls along, nobody's called you yet to fill out a form. It's okay, but you're waiting, right? You're scrolling through your phone, all that great stuff. And here it is, 9.25. You, you start to say, okay, I'm here. But, you know, I didn't fill out nothing. I, I didn't do no, no extra stuff. I'm still here, right? Then 930 hits. How many of us get upset or start to get annoyed when our appointment as a, was at a certain time? It's that time and I'm not being seen yet. How many of us? Come on now. How many of us? How many of us have been there? And we like, okay. I've been here, I need to hurry up and get done because I got places to be and people to go to or I got to go back to work and this is on my time. But are we waiting patiently? Because you may have an appointment, but that don't mean it's coming at that appointed time. Hmm. Wow. You're absolutely right. Angela, you're so right. God is testing our weight posture. I love that. He's testing our weight posture. Are we checking our email every five minutes? Are we asking God, when is it going to happen? Exactly. Sometimes our weight posture can be that of someone that, okay, we ask God for it to happen and we're waiting on it to happen instead of asking God for it to happen and leaving it to him to make it happen. Are we, are, we, are we praying to God about the same thing every single day? Or are we praying to God about it, placing it on the altar and leaving it there for him to handle? See, that's about waiting patiently. You can ask God to do something for your family, lay it on the altar, leave it there. And wait on God to do it. But some of us begin praying so much about the same thing over and over again to where to when and where it, when it does not happen, we start to get upset. We start to get annoyed. We start to get so frustrated to where our prayer life then becomes dull. Our prayer life becomes void. Our prayer life becomes shallow. Our prayer posture becomes empty. 
and men and women of God, that is the least, that is the most dangerous thing as a child of the Most High to have happen is your prayer life becomes dull. Your prayer life becomes powerless. Your prayer life becomes void. It becomes shallow. It becomes empty. Because if your prayer life is empty, that means your relationship with God is becoming empty. And if your relationship with God becomes empty, that's when your posture becomes powerless and then it becomes subjected and vulnerable to the acts and the impurities and the entrances of Satan and, the, and his demons and the principalities. And that's when things begin to happen. But how many of us are waiting patiently? And then he heard my cry. When I waited patiently, he heard my cry. And then he lifted me. He brought me out of the situation I was in and placed me on something sturdy. He brought me out of something that I was sinking never to be found again. And he put me on a rock that is stable. He placed my feet on a rock to stand. God put me there. But in order for that to happen, I've had to wait patiently. And I got to make sure that in the wait, in the wait, I'm acting patient. See, it's one thing to say I'm waiting patiently. It's another thing to act patiently and move in patience. Pastor Des, how do I move in patience? Stop worrying about it. Nah, that's, that's not... You don't understand. I, I gotta worry about it. That that that's how I that that's how I keep focused. I continue to worry about it. Well, let me tell you something about worry. When you're worried about it, you take your onus, or how can I say this? Hey, good morning, Wendell. How you doing, brother? When. You worry about the situation. You take the weight that you gave back to God and you're putting it back on your shoulder. Wow. When you're worried about a situation that you prayed to God about and you're waiting patiently on God to do and you're worried about it, what you end up doing, man of God, woman of God, what you end up doing is you end up Put, you end up picking up what you just placed on the altar and putting it back on your shoulders. And it's already a weight that we can't harry, we can't carry, we can't hold on to. Because eventually we catch spiritual muscle failure. That's the reason why God says leave it on the altar and allow me to handle it. But as we leave it on the altar, we must leave it there. If we're leaving it there, that means we are believing in God to do it. So if I'm believing in God to do it, I'm waiting patiently on God to do it. As I wait patiently on God to do it, I realize that I left it with him. So I don't have to continue praying about it every day. I don't have to continue to pray about it every day. Or my thought process my, my, my language, my prayer language can change in this position. I pray that God move in my finances. Now I'm praying that I'm now I'm praying that God, I believe you are already moving in my finances. Yes, yes, Wendell. Give it to God and don't look back at it. Or when you place it on the altar, let your prayer language begin to change. What do you mean by that, Pastor Des? I prayed for my business. I prayed that, God, you will take my business to another level. And now that I've already prayed, I've placed that on the altar, that God is moving my business to another level. So as I placed it on the altar, I'm waiting patiently and I'm backing up on it, from it. 
I'm waiting patiently on God to do it. So now when I begin to pray about my business, I begin to change my language saying, instead of saying, God, I need for you to, to, do, to, 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 to move in my business. Now I'm praying that God, I believe you're already moving in my business. God, as I wait patiently on you, I believe that you are moving in my business even now as I wait patiently. You see how our dynamic changes, our language changes in our prayer? Instead of us asking God to please move on my business, please, please move on my marriage, God. Please move on my relationship, God. Please move in this situation for me, God. Please move, please move, please move. We're, we're, we're giving it to him and then we're taking it back. Wow. We're giving it to him and then we're taking it back. We place it on the altar and then we pick it up from the altar. And then we wonder why we're in a position where we're always worried about it. We're in a position to where we're always nervous about it. We're in a position to where we're always thinking about it. We're in a position to where we're always pondering on it. We're in a position to where we're sitting there and all we can think about is, God, if it, it, is, are you going to supply this need, God? Isn't he Jehovah Jireh? Isn't he Jehovah Jireh? Don't he provide for you? Isn't he the supplier of your needs? Isn't he? So why are you worried about if he's going to supply your need or not? Why is he, why are you worried about it, see, if he's going to provide for you or not? Why are you worried about it? Why are you worried about it? It's time to place things on the altar and wait patiently on God to do it. A lot of our things have not taken place in our life because God is sitting here like this. God is like, <laughs> you keep giving it to me, but then you keep taking it from me. You're not even allowing me to be God in your life. So how do you expect the things in your life to change or take a drastic, amazing, anointed turn if you keep taking it from the man who can make the impossible possible? You keep taking it from me. Well, God, it's hard. God says, I know it's hard. This is the reason why I am your strength in times of weakness. God, I, I just don't, I just don't feel I can make it through. But I'm the one that won't give you more than you can bear. God is saying, I won't give you more than you can bear. But sometimes you keep taking what I need to help you with. And then you're in a position to where you're bearing more than you should bear because you keep taking it from me. It's somebody online this morning. I can literally feel a pulling right now. I can feel that you have prayed to God for, it's not a bunch of stuff, but it's something specific. And it's like, you're looking for God to do it immediately because it's affecting you emotionally. Wow. You're looking for God to help you in this specific thing immediately because it's affecting you emotionally. And God is saying the reason why it's affecting you emotionally is because you're worried about how long it's going to take me to help you get through this. Wow. And God says, when you're worried about what I'm going to do in your life, you take the power away from me. God says, cast all your cares upon me. God loves you. And he wants to take care of you. And he wants your cares to be, all your petitions made known to me, made known to him everything place it on that altar and leave it there and as you leave it there wait patiently on it to happen as you go in your as you go through your everyday life and you prayed about it prayer posture needs to change i mean prayer language needs to change worry does no no longer needs to be in your vocabulary when it comes down to things you are asking god to do Worry, period, should not be in the vocabulary of, our, of us as men and women of God. I know it's hard. I know it's easier said than done because sometimes we worry about things and worry just takes place. And sometimes with us worrying about certain things, it actually, it actually keeps us focused on what we need to do. 
So sometimes I would say, for lack of a better way of speaking, like how there's good stress and bad stress, there may be good worry and some bad worry. But what makes the worry to the point where it becomes bad and it becomes toxic is when that is a focus on your mind every single day you wake up and it, it changes the way you function throughout the day. You ask God to teach you how to do this thing? Well, allow him to teach you how to do it and wait patiently on him to show you how to do it. We got to wait patient, y'all. And then he will take you out from where you are sinking in and place you on a surface to where you will no longer sink again. Ah, that feels good to my spirit. When you wait patiently on him and he answers you, he will then pull you out of the place you have been sinking in and place you on a surface to never sink again again but you've got to wait and I know it's hard man I know this is every time we sit there we talk about this pastor there's everything we every time you talk you talk about waiting patiently you talk about wait patiently wait patiently wait patiently I'm through waiting patiently I'm tired of waiting patiently I'm tired of it I want God to move now and I got one question to ask you. Didn't God wait patiently on you to turn your life around? Hello? Hmm. Didn't God wait patiently on you to turn your life around? Is God still waiting patiently on you to turn your life around? Whoa. <laughs> Is God still waiting patiently on you to turn your life around. And the whole time, God still got his arms wide open. For some of us, we haven't turned our life completely around. And God is still waiting patiently on us with his arms wide open, ready to receive us. So how can we sit there and ask God or be upset as we wait patiently on God to move? And it took us years to get right with God. Even though we knew what right looks like, it took us years to get our lives right with God. And with some of us, we still trying to get our life right. We know what right looks like, but we still trying to get it right. How many of us, how many of us are still in the position to where God is waiting patiently on us? Mm. So many women of God in our prayer this morning, y'all, and our prayer this morning. What we're going to do is we're going to place our request on the altar. Hmm. And we're going to allow God to do what he said he would do. But this time, hmm, this time, we understand what patience looks like. And this time we will wait patiently. See, sometimes we need to be taught what it looks like because we know what patience is in the natural realm, but we don't understand what patience is in the spiritual realm. And as I continuously wait on God to answer this prayer, how do I pray about this thing from this point moving forward? And this is what we talked about this morning. You place it on the altar, now move in patience and wait for God to do it. But as you wait, you wait. You're patiently waiting and you're still with a good heart, a pure heart. You're still with a celebratory heart. You still are joyful as you wait patiently on God to do it. You replace the worry with joy. You replace the worry with rest. You replace the worry with rejoicing. Amen. Amen. So let's pray, y'all. Father, God, we love you. We worship you. We praise you. We adore you. Lord God, we lift your name on high. We say hallelujah to Jehovah in the highest. We praise your name. We adore you. 
We exalt you. We exalt you, Father. Your name be praised. At your name, all knees shall be, all, all, all knees shall bow, all eyes shall be closed, Father. Father, and at the sight and the 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 ex the exaltation of your name, Father God, things change. Things change. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that you are Lord. Thank you, Father, for covering us thus far. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being who you are to us. Thank you, Father, for loving us when we didn't love ourselves. Thank you, Father, for loving us when we didn't love you back. Father, we worship you in this moment right now. At this time, in this morning hour, we sacrifice sleep, we sacrifice time with other things, and we give it back to you this morning in a sacrifice of praise and a sacrifice of communication with you to deepen our relationship with you, Father. Let your will be done in our lives. Move all through our life, Father. Father, we will love that you direct us. We, we love the fact that you are our Lord and our Savior. Father, we just don't want you to be our Savior, Father, but we want you to be our Lord. Father, we want to cast our cares upon you. Father God, as we, as we die to our will, as we die to our own choices, as we die to our own way of thinking, Father God, we increase in the way you want us to think. We increase in the way you want us to act. We increase in your will. We increase in where you want us to go. Father, we walk and follow your direction today. We realize that as we, as we try to do it ourselves, Father God, we cannot. We can't do this thing called life on our own. We need the creator of life to help us do this life. And so, Father, we worship you as our creator. We worship you, Father God. We adore you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Father God, as being the one that created us. Elohim, Lord Jesus, we worship you for being our creator. Creating the fact that now we have a place to lay things. Our, our concerns, our questions, our worries. Father God, you created a space to where we are able to lay things for you. And Father God, we thank you for doing it this morning. We thank you, Father God, for doing it this morning. Father, we pray, Lord God, that you are amazingly moving in our, in our situations right now. But Father, as we wait patiently, thank you, Father God, for teaching us what patient looks like this morning. Thank you, Father God, for giving us the, re the revelation of what patient looks like. And Father, we are moving in patience, Father. We pray right now that everything we've laid on the altar, Lord, for you to do, we are believing that you're doing it even now. We believe that you're doing it even now, Father God, in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that you sacrificed your only son for us so that way we have direct line of communication to you through him. So, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray right now that you're moving on our behalf, on the situations, on the concerns, on the things that we've laid on the altar. And, Father God, we are rejoicing in the fact that you are picking us up out of sinking places and putting us on a rock to stand, putting us on a solid surface to be able to function properly. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now I pray, Lord God, thank you for Rapha. Thank you for Jehovah healing. Father, we continuously pray a healing over Miss Jennifer McDaniel's daughter, Father. Geneva. 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 Uh, we just going to call her G this morning, Father. We thank you, Father, that you are healing her stomach virus right now. You're healing her stomach pain right now. Thank you, Father, for healing her from the inside out. 
Thank you, Lord God, for healing, for hearing your daughter Jennifer's prayers. Thank you, Father God, that she prayed for her daughter and she was believing in you and still believing that Jehovah Rapha will show up and show out in her daughter's life. And Father, we are rejoicing right now that as we, are, as we have officially laid on the altar the healing of Jennifer's daughter, we pray that, Father God, you are already healing G right now. You are already healing her stomach. You are already hearing, healing the pain in her body right now, Father God. And we are rejoicing in her recovery right now. As we wait patiently on it to manifest, we are rejoicing in the manifestation even now. In Jesus' name. Continue to cover her with your precious blood. From the, head, from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet and continue to cover her daughter G from the crown of her little head to the soles of her feet. In the name of Jesus. We love you for it. We thank you for it. And Father, we thank you that as we wait patiently, Father, we pray that Jehovah Shalom begin to overshadow us. The God of peace begin to overshadow us to where we are no longer worried on the things that we have asked you to do. We are no longer worried on the things that we, on the requests that we have made known to you. We are no longer worried over the things that we placed on the altar, Father. We are no longer worried about it, but we are rejoicing in it. We are rejoicing in the manifestation of it happening. And we love you for it today. We praise you for it today. We adore you for it today, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that you forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of, of waiting impatiently on you. Forgive us for always asking you to do the same thing. Forgive us for always asking you to, always repeating our petitions to you. Always repeating our requests to you. Always focusing on one thing that we need for you to do for us and, and praying to you for it over and over and over and over again. To the point where our prayer life becomes no, our dull, our prayer life becomes empty. Father, forgive us for that. As we repent towards you this morning for our way of thinking, our way of acting in prayer, our, our impatient thought process, our impatient functioning. Father, please forgive us. Wash us clean with the blood of the Lamb this morning as we now understand what it looks like and what it means to wait patiently and pray patiently. Wait patiently and pray patiently. Father, we love you and we realize that as we, as we are entering the end of 2022, we are fixing our wait and prayer posture. We're fixing our weight posture and our patient posture. And Father, we are allowing you to be God in our life. We are allowing you to be Lord in our life. So Father God, I pray for every individual that is online this morning. I pray for their petitions be made known, that you already are aware of them. But I pray, Father God, that their patient posture changes now. And they are already walking in victory. And I pray, Lord God, that you come to their aid. You are pleased in their patience. And you begin to manifest the request that's made known. And we love you in this atmosphere, Father. We adore you in this atmosphere, Jesus. We realize that we can't do this thing without you. We realize that in waiting patiently, we can't wait patiently on you like we wait patiently on a package being delivered. We can't wait patiently on you like we wait patiently on an appointment that we're at. Father, it's a different type of patience that we need to have with you. But we realize this spiritual patience comes with confidence in you. This spiritual patience comes with knowing that you're going to provide it. This spiritual patience comes with knowing that we've given it to you by placing it on the altar. And we're not looking back, meaning we're not asking for the same thing in prayer the next time. But we're believing that you're already moving on that, that we're asking in you next time. 
And Father, I encourage. Help me to encourage your people this morning and let them know that you got it all handled. Encourage them, Father, that you have it all under control. And we have confidence that you have all, it all under control. And thank you, Lord God, for helping us see another day. Thank you, Father God, for waking us up this morning to have the opportunity to pray to you, to have the opportunity to be taught, to have the opportunity to understand now. But we lean not to our own understanding, Father, but in all of our ways, we are acknowledging you. So even in our patient ways, Father God, we are acknowledging you. We are acknowledging you as we wait patient. And Father, we love you today. We adore you today. We praise you today. And so Father, I pray right now that your will be done. Your will, not mine, your will, Lord. Your will, Father, be done. It be done, it be done. It be done, Father, it be done, it be done. And everyone's life that is online this morning, everyone that has tuned in this morning, your will be done in our life, Father. Lead us, Lord Jesus, and we will follow. Continue to lead us, Father, as we follow. Thank you for being patient with us, Lord, as we change our life around to serve you to be pleasing in your sight. Thank you, Father God, for never treating us as we treat you in forms of patience. Thank you, Lord, for always being a patient God to love us, to always embrace us, Father. Thank you for this, Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty matchless name of Jesus Christ, and we love you for it. And we adore you for it, Lord God. I pray this morning that you do some amazing things for your people. I pray, Father God, that as I sit here, Lord, with my arms outstretched, that you begin to re-energize. You begin to place new focus, new vision, and new anointing on your people. A fresh anointing wake us up with a fresh way of movement in you, Father. And as we wait patiently for you to move, we're already operating in, the, in new movement, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. And we love you for it, Lord. We praise you for it, Lord. We adore you and you only for it, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, have your way. And God's people say, Amen. 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 Lord, we thank you. We love you. And we adore you. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, I love you all. Thank you all for tuning in this morning to our 6 a.m. prayer pursuit. I love how God just begins to help teach us and show us things at these prayer pursuits, y'all. I don't know about y'all, but I'm getting revelation every time I log in, either at 12 a.m. or 6 a.m. God has given new revelation on things, and I love God for it. I want you all to continue to pray in the healing process of Jennifer McDaniel's daughter, Genevieve. <laughs> Hope I pronounced that correctly, Genevieve. We place her on the altar and we're believing in God to continuously heal. Continuously heal. In that stomach, continuously heal. And we're walking on, we're walking in the favor of God. We're walking with the power of God, that God is gonna be doing some healing in Genevieve's life right now. We proclaim it right now. I decree and I declare the healing of God be so even, so powerful and it saturate her body. 
to where it makes doctors question medicine. Mm. I pray the healing power in Genevieve so strong to where it makes doctors question medicine. Mm. I love you guys. Listen, this morning, this morning, we have church, y'all. We are having our 11 a.m. service, 11 a.m. If you're in the Tri-City area, Columbus, Georgia. If you are not in the Columbus, Georgia area, but you still want to be a part of our service, we are streaming it live right here at our Facebook platform right here. So if you have the opportunity, please tune in. Please, please, please tune in. God has a word. God has a word. He literally flipped the direction I was going in last night and had me at a stump. But I had to wait patiently. Wow. I wanted to hurry up, get this word so I can enjoy the rest of my night. And God was like, nope, you're going to sit right here and wait patiently on me to, to reveal something to you. And it, it did not happen until... Not only did I wait patiently on God, y'all, but it happened when I allowed him to do it. So I allowed God to give me what he wanted me to preach, but I began to, I began to do things. I began to move in other areas. I began to, well, let me... Let me go downstairs and let me help my wife with, with some bags. And Lord, let me go downstairs. And immediately, when I begin to help her with things, that's when God began to give me revelation of what to preach this morning. <laughs> it's crazy how when you wait on God patiently, and the waiting on God patiently doesn't always have to be you sitting there waiting on him to speak. It can be you doing your everyday life things, but the difference this time is you're not worried about it. And I wasn't worried for a, for a, for a while. I wasn't worried. I said, God, he's going to give it to me. I know God going to give it to me. And immediately he gave it to me. And I went right back upstairs and I began to channel and focus and get back into the study and God gave me revelation. So listen, y'all, I need you to be seated. Our doors open up this morning at 1030. I need you to be seated by 1030, 1045, the latest. I need you to be seated. Why? Because God has a word for you this morning. Service starts at 11 a.m. sharp. God has an amazing word today. You don't want to miss this thing. You don't want to miss it because it's going to be powerful. It's going to be powerful. But if you are unable to join us, if you're unable to join us in person, you can join us live right here, right here on our Facebook page. We'll be going live at 11 a.m. I love you guys so much. Happy belated Thanksgiving. Listen, enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy the rest of your week. I pray, I decree and I declare that this week will not only be a week of patience, but this week will be a week of revelation that God will begin to reveal. God will re re begin to answer the prayer and God will begin to show you that he is the one that you need to be leaning on. So that way you have peace that surpasses all of your understanding. And I can't wait to see y'all this at this morning at 11. I love you. Thank you so much, Angela. I love you too, sweetie. I love you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Listen, I love you too. I love you, brother Wendell. Thank you so much for tuning in, brother. I love you guys. I love you. Those of you that I may have missed, because I don't I may not see you here on this, on this right here, this screen. Trust and believe that I love you. Miss Jennifer, I love you too, sweetie. Thank you so much. I'm sending love all the way from Georgia to where you are. 
and I'm praying and I believe that the healing power of God is already taking place in Genevieve and I, we are all touching and we're in agreement of that. I love you guys so much. Can't wait to see you this morning. Enjoy the rest of your week. See you in a few hours. God bless each and every one of y'all.